lot of superstition involved with feng shui. What I try and do is separate that out. So basically there are nine different types of energy that I'll show you in your chart. Each, if, if you like to think of it, they're given numbers, however for me the number is just a label. So each number for me represents a database of information of thousands of years of observation that can be um, strung in and, and, and uh, applied to say well this is the type of energy that's in that area and this is what you would be experiencing and this is how we can either magnify it or reduce it. I find a lot of people in feng shui they'll go oh I'm in bad luck it means my whole world is going to fall down on me and I've actually um, said well no you're not in bad luck you're in luck that is supposed to where you're supposed to experience challenges or a little bit of hardship to learn what you need to learn. Right, so what we do is I'll go downstairs and I'll take a compass reading of your building and then that lets me see and draw a chart. Um, that plus the year that the building is built um, lets me draw a chart for your whole building. Then what I do is I get a floor plan of your actual apartment and where it sits within the building and I can see what kind of energy you're going to have uh, within the apartment. Then what I do is I do a chart for the uh, apartment itself. There are two main areas within your apartment, the front door and your bedroom, that affect harmony, prosperity, your career, those kind of aspects of your life. Then what I do is I say, okay, well, given the energy that you've got, how can we best utilise the space, the way your furniture is positioned, the petition that you've got, uh, where would that be best sort of structured in your home, colours, um, shapes that you can have, uh, soft furnishings, sculptures, anything that you like to decorate your home with. We can then start placing them or start uh, recommending, I guess, um, which parts of your rooms would be best suited to different types of colours and shapes and to help enhance, I guess, or lift all the positive energy that's in the room and help minimise the energy that's um, sort of going to cause some obstacles or challenges for you. The year that your house was built is termed age of seven. From there, we compile a chart with all the numbers on it to say, okay, what kinds of energy are circulating in the different areas within the building. And what's coming through the front of the building is um, energy that's not so conducive, conducive to prosperity. Um, so what you would do at the front door is make sure, in this case particular, that it was uh, very cleanly kept, decluttered, uh, well lit. You actually, in Feng Shui, you would use a wind chime at the front of your door. Not for good luck, but so that when the wind blew it, the sound of metal on metal dissipates the negative energy in the air or clear, clears the air. It's like space clearing. The chart as a whole is actually quite a good chart. We've got a lot of Hoto combinations, which is special energy. In your unit, both of the bedrooms don't really um, enhance, I guess, relationships. So you would actually remedy that by putting red on your door or red decor and furniture. So using fire um, and also what supports fire is wood. So the wood element, if you can incorporate that um, into where I put wood, then that will help support you as well. In the kitchen, you need to use uh, wood and water to help remedy uh, the strong metal element that's in here, a glass vase and bamboo in water. Um, the number three is there because uh, three represents the number of wood, so it's just a layering effect. Okay, and I put it on the oh, yeah. okay. So it actually thrive in that area as well. And what you're doing is it's it's thriving, it's you know creating a, a better feeling. When you put it there, you'll feel a lot more comfortable, a lot more in balance. If you're sick, then you would use this area to uh, recuperate, rest, relax. This is a space where you could um, keep a fish tank or some sort of kinetic object that's con constantly moving in your space. You know one of those water pictures you can put on your table and it just oh, yeah, circulates that through? Nice. Yeah. Okay, if you do have a guest, that what you'll find is that, um, especially if it's female, they're probably better off sleeping within this sector of the room. Okay. Sure. Within this sector, the no uh, male or female, they're both going to find it very difficult to sleep. Then their health will get impacted, and then they'll find that they won't want to stay in there. So this is the year that you were born, the month, the day, and the hour. Who you actually are as a Yang Fire person? I can definitely relate to it. Um, a lot of what she said. 
um, I already knew or like I was in the process of processing so you know all the fire elements uh, and I've definitely already been attracted to fire elements and um, reds in particular. And a young fire person is um, a person who um, feels joy as a primary emotion and reacts from it and is a very polite kind of person. So if I was interacting with you at work or um, socially, um, I would, to get in your good books or to be able to get along with you, I would have to be a polite kind of person. And I'm definitely a person who, you know, likes nature and the woods and um, all that kind of thing. So even the, the parts of my personality when she was going through my pillars and my chart, you know, I could, I could definitely relate to all of those traits and, um, you know, how she was explaining it. It was, it was really spot on. I'm definitely a creative person as well, so a lot of what she said, you know, is really going to spur me into sort of, you know, getting those extra little pieces. Yeah. I'm definitely looking forward to bringing into my apartment what I need and making it wholly my own. So.